everyone. I want to show you how easy it is to create a video in Edpuzzle, or actually not create, you're editing a video. So once you find one, it's really easy to embed questions. And so then that way you can ensure your students are getting the comprehension that you want them to get. You can also confirm that they watched the video. Um, so there's a lot of really cool tools in it. So I'm excited to show you how it works. So I hope that you have poked around a little bit, but I'm just gonna review some basics of the home screen. So when I signed up, I said that I taught computers. So this, the first box that I see are computer classes in my school. So it shows the other teachers that have computer classes, and then I have made one video, so it shows here. And then there's a see more, so there's this like trending in computers. So I could sort of look to see what other classes have done if I wanted trending in Massachusetts and then in the United States. So the other thing that they have on the side here is I could click on the curriculum and they have some curriculum so I could look at the content and I can sort of pick which subject I teach. And so that's another option. If I click on my content, then I only have one video right now and it lets me have 20 videos unless I add more teachers. So up here in this menu, and so we always know that that icon just working with other programs, there's usually a menu underneath there. And if you click, you can see I have one out of 20 storage spaces used. And I can get more space by inviting teachers. So they're, they're gonna tell me how to get more space. Obviously I can pay for things, but I don't want to pay for things. And so then I can invite teachers and each teacher that comes, so if I click on that, then there's this link right here. And I can put it out on Twitter, I can share it on Facebook, I can send invitations, or I can put this code up for people to add in. So that's a way you can say like, hey, I'll add in, and then you can get three more videos that you can store, and so you can have a neighbor get three more videos. So that's just what that is. Um, and then these popular channels down here, so they have you know Edpuzzle, YouTube, Khan Academy, so you can search directly through Edpuzzle. Now, I often, you know, just poke around in YouTube, so you can do either way. One of the important things, if you're taking a video from YouTube, is that you click to approve it for Sandwich. This is a big issue in lots of schools. Lots of parents are like, they want my kid to watch a video and they can't see it. We have to approve videos for our students to be able to see it. So if we don't do that, anybody that's in our domain, any of the kids cannot watch the video without us doing that approval. So just make sure that you always check in YouTube and that you do that. The other thing is I've added the extension onto mine, so the Edpuzzle extension. And so I can just click right from here and it's gonna pop me right into Edpuzzle. So that's sort of convenient. Um, so that's one way of getting in. So now you can see I have two tabs up here. Now what if I didn't do that? If I wanted to search within the content, so I could go into YouTube and I could do searches through this way and I could find something. So like if I was teaching Punnett squares, then I could use that. Um, so whatever you want to do, but I'm just gonna go back to this one because I, I did the search. So the first thing it does is it says there's a cut section, there's a voiceover section, and then there's a question section. And then it's gonna automatically save as I go. It's also taking up here the title. So I can click on that and I can rename the title a little bit if I don't want that title and I can hit cancel. Do you notice that that save title didn't turn, turn colors yet? Because it doesn't turn until I make a change and then it's gonna change the title. So, um, and it says that it's saved automatically. So this finish button is when I'm done. And then this section over here for the video event, so as I add things in, it's gonna show. So one of the things that I'm gonna check for first is I'm gonna see if there's any of this video I wanna cut. So I can hit the play button. And so maybe I don't want that introduction, maybe I do. And then there's some sound. So if I wanted to cut something, let's just say, um, I wanted to cut, I could add a cut here and then I could drag a little bit. So it's going to eliminate that space. So you can chop up videos using this, which is very handy. So you can just cut up little spaces if you want to do that. So now if I played the video, it would play that first section and then it would play this section. And then often at the end of YouTube videos, they have this, you know, um, at the end they try and get you subs to subscribe. So I usually cut that piece off because I don't want the subscribe. So once I have it, I'm like, okay, it's a minute, 58 seconds. This is what I want to do. 
if I wanted to do a voiceover, I could record a section. So it says, why add a voiceover? So you could just put, it would replace their audio. So if you liked what the video was showing, but you didn't like the way they explained it, I don't usually use voiceovers, but you could if you wanted. And if I go to the question section, it's going to give me three choices. So a multiple choice question. This I'm just going to show you. They automatically put the first one as being the green. So sometimes I get screwed up. So just be careful for this. You're going to type your question in. Um, so whatever it is. So you get to the part of the video. So you play the video. And you sort of, you know, get to the part where you want to have your question. And so that's that play point. So you can scrub or you can just play and, and click. And then you type whatever question you have. You know, so this is my important question. And then once you do that, then you type the answer. So it's like, you know, you type an actual full long answer. But you'd say if B was the right answer, then you'd put the check mark there and the X for that one's not the right answer. If you want to add more answers, and obviously I'm just doing this for brevity. So you can see that there's, you know, four different choices. So I have one, two, three wrong, and then one right. So you could have multiple rights if you want. So that's possible. So you can have um, more than one option if you want to do that. And you click save, and then it shows you and it tells you which one is the right one. Now, if I went back in, I can hit the edit button and I can make adjustments. The other thing that you can do is you can add feedback. And so the feedback, what it does is it shows to the user in the end. So that's kind of a neat feature. So you could do that if you wanted. Okay, so I'm going to hit save for now and I'm going to continue. So you can add another question here. So you can just click on the icons if you wanted to do that. Um, or you can just click there and then see where you want it to go. I'm going to hit pause there. And now I can pick a different type of question. So the multiple choice questions will be answered right away. They will self-correct. They will answer it for the student. And then it's going to show them what the answer was. So there's two different ways around that. So if, as a teacher, a kid took it and they didn't get the score that I wanted, you could go in as a teacher and you could reset them. The other thing that you can do is you can say, OK, like you didn't get that right like if you get something wrong take notes as to as to what the right answer is and why it's the right answer and add that on google classroom so you could have them like put it in a google doc or just like you'd normally do the test correction so or you can have them do a private comment so it's a way if they're not getting the comprehension right and then that's another way that you can handle it or you can reset um, i would probably just have them write the answers down and send it in instead of resetting but it's sort of teacher's choice. So when you guys play, you'll get to see what you think. The open-ended questions are something that you have to grade yourself. So you have to go in and look at them and grade them. So you might want to just, you know, be careful with that, not to have too many, or it depends on your content. And then the note, and so this is what the open-ended question is. You type your question in here, and all of the questions, they have the bold and the italic and the underline. You can put equations in. You can put a link in. You can put an image in. And you can put in, you can make your own equation. So this is like to the power superscript and subscript, and this is an actual equation. So you can do that. Again, you can add feedback. So you can type your feedback, and that's that one. And then the note is, this is where you can, you can click the microphone to record audio if you want. You can put links in. So I did one that was linking to the sounds of Antarctica. So I'm gonna show you, and then when you're done, hit cancel it. You click the finish button and then this is what it would show. So this is called Antarctica and I could either assign it or I could edit it or I could duplicate it or I could delete it. So I'm going to hit delete because it didn't really fully edit that one. And so I'm just going to show you this one that I already have in my content. So you can see from this I have these are the times they're going to have to go 43 seconds in, 57 seconds, 1 minute 15 seconds and 1 minute 54 seconds. And it's multiple choice. I have two multi three multiple choices and one open-ended. So I'm going to click on the edit so you can see. But let's just look at the video. So you can see that you can play, you can rewind. These are the points where there are the questions when something's happening. Um, and then three other people have used this video. It gives the names of the people that have used the video and it gives us similar videos. So it gives you some information if you want to, you know, look to see what other people did. So I'm just going to hit edit 
And so you can see, you can see that I did a cut like we talked about. And these are the points of where I have my questions on the side. And then this is the reset button. And so you can see in my note that I do have a link that I told you about. And there's an open-ended question and then the multiple choice questions. So that's that one. And I'm just going to hit finish. It automatically saves it. So I'm ready to assign this. So if I click the assign button, these are the choices that I get. So right now I only have one class. So I can click on that class and I can, I'm not going to click the assign button yet because I have other things I want to explain. So prevent skipping. That prevents the kids from being able to scrub the video and just answer the questions. So if you want to make them watch the whole video, you keep that on and that's the default. In the video, if they have closed captions, then it will show them. The kids still have to turn it on, but it allows the closed captions to come through. And then if I want them to post it on Google Classroom. So I don't, if you post it, then I'm going to show you that you're going to want to edit it because it puts it sort of up at the top. And then you can also from here add a new class. If you're like, oh, I wanted to assign this to a different class, you can add a new class that way too. And so if I click assign, this is going to post it right on Google Classroom for me. And it doesn't give the editing like we're used to. Um, so this one, I didn't put any due date on it. So it shows, you know, all that detail. And so that I can download my grades, I can delete assignments. So all of those pieces. And so I'm going to show you what it looks like from the teacher view now. And I'm going to show you what it looks like from the student view. So it just put this Ed Puzzle up here in like La La Land. And I actually had an Ed Puzzle down here. So I'm going to drag this up, move this one down into the Ed Puzzle. So now it's organized. And you can see that I can see this assignment here. I don't have a due date on it. It has the information that I gave and then I can click and I can go right into the video. So I can't, do you see how there's no like, I'm gonna try and scrub. Do you see that it doesn't do it for me? It will not let me scrub through. So it's gonna go and it's gonna ask me all these questions. I can put the closed captions on and I want mine to be in English and um, and so it will add those closed captions. So it's just a sound first. So it's not going to do the closed captions. But you can see that that works. And then when I get to each part, it's going to ask me questions and I'm going to answer. So I'm going to pause the video and get to that part so that you can see that without hearing the video. Okay, so we've reached the first part in my watching of the film where there's a question. So the first multiple choice question asks, why do they send so few people to Antarctica? And this is kind of tricky because well, it's not a tricky question, but what I don't love is that it says it's a multiple choice question, but do you see the shape? Are those squares? So the kids hopefully will pick up on the fact that they could answer multiple choice. They, they could do multiple of these. Anytime you see a square, that means it's not mutually exclusive. So you can have multiple answers. Um, but this one is that Antarctica is difficult to reach but I'm actually going to pick a wrong answer so they sort of mentioned some of these things in a couple of these things in the video but let's say I'm gonna submit it so you can see so before I even answered I could have rewatched that section so if I wasn't sure of the answer I could click rewatch it would just bring me back to that to the beginning so I could rewatch that piece and I did not get that right so I picked the wrong answer I picked their hundred miles away and it shows with the little green arrow what the right answer is. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to pause again at the open response so you can see the different types of questions. So here's an open-ended question. So I asked an open-ended question that they could type an answer to and as soon as they would type their answers they would hit submit and it doesn't it just says to be graded because they're not going to tell me if I got that one right because you actually need the teacher to look at that one. And here's the other thing that I could have done. So I put a note in and you can see that I added a link inside the note. So I could click on that and it's going to take me out to a different website. And this is just, I thought it would be kind of cool to link. They have this um, Antarctica.gov site and they have, you know, all different sounds of animals. So I thought that would be kind of cool to link. I just wanted to show you that that was another option. And then I can click to see my results. And so I finished the whole video and I got two out of four right because I don't get my grade yet because something needs to be graded. And I can scroll down and I can see which ones I didn't get right. And again, I could, if you wanted the kids to do this, they could type to say um, what the answers are. 
And so they're done. So then the kid's going to go back to their Google Classroom. And if they want to add, if they got things wrong, you could, again, in your directions, tell them what you want them to do. And if not, you can just say, like, Mark is done. So this is saying that I'm done. And so now I'm going to show you. We're going to go back to the teacher. And then if I refreshed it, you can see that I now watched it as the student watched it. So again, it's going to show the same pieces. It's going to show which ones were right. Um, so there was a couple that were right. And then this last one, the kid got wrong. And so again, I could make a comment on that by clicking the comment button, explaining, you know, giving some type of commentary. But I don't think that's the best way to do it. Um, but we have this information. We can go to the next student and say, so you can just move one student at a time and just grade that piece and say, like, yes, you got that one right. And I forgot to grade it for the other student. So I'm going to go back in and I look at it and I'm like, yep, they got that one right. And so now the grading, it's going to show for this 75%. We got three out of four. And so, and I can do the same, see the statistics for the teacher as well. Um, in my grade book, if I go in there, it's going to put this information. So it's going to put on the side what you film was that you put in or what the assignment was, and it's going to show the grades. And it would obviously list all of your students if you had them. If I click export grade book, it's going to download this CSV file and that as you know, stands for comma separated values. And when you have that type of file, you can op open it in any spreadsheet program, and you can also import it into lots of different programs. So we could upload it to Google and use Google Sheets. We could upload it to Google Classroom. We could also upload it right to PowerSchool. So it gives a lot of versatility when you're able to get a CSV file. And once you're done with your gradebook, you can go back to the content and start the process over again. So again, remember, you can look on the side. So I hope that you play around, you try this out, see if you like it. I think in terms of being able to tell exactly when someone watched and that they're getting the content that you want them to get, those comprehension questions, I think it can be a really invaluable tool. And I'm excited to help you get started.